Hey everybody, welcome again. This is Brilliant at the Basics, episode, I don't know, 394 with Peter Vexelman. And uh, we are here again talking about keeping it simple. Keeping it simple, stupid. And I often need to be remembered of that. Remembered, see? I just I, I, need, I often need I need I often need to be remembered to keep it simple and by this guy that I'm interviewing here on the podcast. Again, this is the Real Estate Investing Mastery Podcast card you're here. And we're going to be talking about seller lead sheets. And uh, one of the things I learned from Peter is the power of these simple, this simple tool because Peter gets about 30, con 30 deals a day, probably get a couple hundred leads a day coming in. And when you're dealing with that kind of volume, it's important to have a simple way that you can look at a deal and quickly, quickly analyze it and quickly make a decision on what kind of offer needs to be made. So um, real quick, before I ask Peter to share us the seller lead sheet, um, if you go to realestateinvestingmastery.com, you can download a copy of this seller lead sheet that Peter's going to be sharing. And I also have another website to give you. We have our Brilliant at the Basics book and or DVD. looks like this. It actually has a real DVD in it. And we talk about the systems and tools that we use in our businesses and how we partner with folks all over the country to do deals. And uh, this is pretty amazing. Freebasicbook.com. Freebasicbook.com. All right, Peter, can you please uh, hold up this seller lead sheet so folks can see it? That's it. Okay. Now there's personal information on there. Don't. Oh, sorry. Is that it? <laughs> well, you're, you're, look, you're, you're a computer nerd and geek. You can edit that out, can't you? I don't know. I don't know. <laughs> but that's a, that's an actual seller lead, right? Yep. That's an actual seller deal. That's right. So I'm going to have to actually leave myself a note to remember to edit out that video. Thank you very much. But, uh, so anyway, what happens in your office when a lead comes in, um, your negotiators, and fills out this seller lead sheet? They're not sitting down and putting it into a spreadsheet or into, into Pipe Drive or Podio or whatever. They're just filling out this lead sheet as they're on the phone. And if the seller is motivated, um, if there's some equity, you're going to make an offer on this thing. And so they fill out this stuff. And many times when you're there, I've been in your office, they'll just come into your office, give you this thing, and you look at it, and within seconds you know, yeah, okay, make an offer for this, or that looks good, go for it, whatever. So what is the seller lead sheet, and why is it so important to you, Peter? Well, look, for, first of all, the, the key component of negotiations is you've got to, you have a fairly short period of time, but ultimately what you want to come out on the back end, you know, aside from a potential deal, you want to come out with some kind of a relationship. Because let's face it, we're dealing with people's large assets. I mean, sometimes this is going to be the biggest financial decision these sellers have ever made. And, and the one thing you don't want to do is you don't want to overwhelm your sellers. You know, a lot of times when people, you know, go to like buy certain things or they go to certain seminars, you know, on the back end, they come out with, you know, these seller information. It's like a disclosure form when you're selling your property. You know, it's 20 pages long. In the end, you know, the seller almost has a bad feeling about the whole thing. So as you saw in ours, you know, we keep it very basic, very simple. We want, us, we want our negotiators to spend more time building a relationship with the seller than they are answering some very basic questions. I mean, let's face it, in our business, everybody knows we could make a buying decision based upon really four or five key questions. I mean, sure, it's nice to have the age of the roof. I mean, okay, that's fine. But in the end, it's a lot more important to have a sales price. You know, it sure is nice to have what kind of siding does it have. But in the end, I'm more concerned how many bedrooms and bathrooms it has. So really, our lead sheets has, has some very basic pieces of information they want. First, we want to get the seller comfortable with who we are. And we tell them right away, look, we're a real estate investment company. We appreciate you giving us a call based upon some marketing material you saw, whether it's a postcard or maybe an ad somewhere. And we just talk to them. You know, our, our, our you know our negotiators are learn are taught to be themselves, to talk, to communicate, to build a relationship. And in the end, in the end, again, the key components of a lead sheet 
is 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 basic property information. You know, like the address of the property, bedrooms and and uh, the bedrooms and bathrooms involved. Um, we like to have the year. Um, we actually have a space here for four square feet, but that's not something we actually ask the seller. Yeah. That's something that our negotiator could get off. You know, tons of websites like Zillow out there. We like to have the asking price or the price that we've negotiated and condition of the property. And if there's a tenant, how much? So that's really in the end, five things that we're asking the, the seller. And based upon those five things, we at least know, we at least know the starting point. We at least know that if this has this many beds and baths, that it's located in such and such area, that if the seller wants such and such price, we can do a quick, you know, quick run against something like a Zillow and get a Zestimate on it. We know we got a viable deal to at least put under contract. But the key component, you know, people all the time ask me, well, I got the lead sheet, Pete, but where's the script? Where's the script that comes with it? And we always, and I always tell people the same thing. There is no script. We want our negotiators to be themselves. We want people to be people because in the end, that's who sellers like to deal with. They like to deal with real people. The last thing you want is for a seller to feel like, well, I just called them to some kind of a call center. You know, even though, you know, I have, you know, almost a dozen negotiators here. And I don't want the sellers to feel like they're calling into some kind of a call center where they're just one of 50,000 calls that are coming in that day. We want them to feel good about the process. We want them to feel legitimacy behind it. And, and the legitimacy is most of the time, you know, gotten through some kind of a relationship. And, uh, and so, again, we fill out these basic sheets and we can make a decision uh, based upon four or five key factors, whether or not we want to move forward with the deal whether we have to renegotiate the deal or whether it's a deal that's just not for us at this point. So I like that because it's more or less building a relationship and building some trust with the seller. One of my favorite questions is, you know, what's your situation? What would you like to see happen? What is your ultimate goal for this property? So getting them to talk, getting them, forcing me to listen to them by asking open-ended questions. When you start drilling down on how old's the basement, how much do you owe, what are your monthly payments, are they current, what's the taxes, uh, who's the bank, what's your interest payment, interest percent, whatever. And so that when you get into those kinds of granular details, it's more like a like a hard and fast interview, and it doesn't. It's just the point of the seller lead sheet is to just really keep it simple, right? Now, when you look at it, when somebody comes into your office and gives you one of these sheets, what are the first things that you look at? Well, you know, when we're making some kind of a decision, let's say I'm making a decision whether to move forward or not, you know, I've been doing this thing long enough. All I really need to know is just some, again, these basic four or five questions. Okay. Where is it located? What's the configuration in terms of bedroom, bathroom? If it's empty, how much work? If it's uh, full, you know, if it's got a tenant, what's the cash flow? That the in in, in in a price, you know, that's really all I need. I don't need to know that it's you know twelve hundred square feet or thirteen hundred fifty square feet. Um, again, I, I I do not need to know those kind of details because the key the key the, the key behind the simplicity again is to build, uh, again from the seller's perspective to build the relationship, but from our perspective to be aggressive in terms of being able to put properties under contract. You know, we're not looking for that one perfect scenario for all the stars to line up. The square foot is right. The siding is right. The basement is right. You know, the roof is right. The air conditioning is right. You know, sometimes what happens when you overcomplicate the deal, again, you're kind of pushing off the seller, but most importantly, you're overcomplicating from yourself because now we only have four or five things that need to come together. If this lead sheet had 30 components on it, all 30 of those components would need to come together. So in a sense, what we're doing is we're preventing ourselves from potentially putting a deal under contract we can make a money on based upon 30 factors that need to come together that in the end, all of us know, probably don't need to come together. You know what I mean? Sure. So, so, so keep it simple from the seller's perspective and from your buying decisions perspective. That's, sure. that's, that's really where you want to stay. So from a system standpoint, does the lead come in, your negotiator pulls out that seller lead sheet, and that's where they keep their notes, right? So then when does that information get put into your database, into your CRM? Um, I'm pretty sure that our negotiators put in afterwards this. 
as they're taking the next call, we're, you know, they're taught to multitask. So they, they know, you know, we have, we're, we're utilizing pipe drive here. And, and then if they know what, what, you know, whether it goes into pipe drive to the retail side for retail agents to look at, whether it goes to inspections and stuff like that. So they're multitasking as they're taking the next call, they're, they're entering. But again, if this was a complicated yeah. lead sheet where it did have 30 different components or 40 different components. And again, obviously we're in a very high volume environment here, but remember time is money, right? And, and, and one of the things we always talk about is don't overcomplicate the process. Well, guess what? If you got 50 things and just a simple data entry of those 20 or 30 or 50 things takes up three or four times more than putting four or five different things into a, a CRM system. One thing I used to do is um, the lead, when I would get the lead or the phone call in, I would keep all of my notes on a yellow pad. Um, I didn't even have a lead sheet, but I would take a picture of that and scan it and send it to my VA who would put it into the database. Mm -hmm. So it's important that you track all your leads so that you can follow up with them, right? But the last thing you need to be doing is sitting behind a computer and putting all this detailed information into a CRM, no matter what you're using, because that, uh, that is time, that's opportunity cost. That's lost yep. money because you should be on the phone talking to sellers, not yep. putting that stuff in uh, the computer. Well, anyway, good, Peter. Thank you very much. Again, guys, if you want, if you go to realestateinvestingmastery.com, look up this episode, you will see the seller lead sheet that Peter's talking about without the seller's information in it. <laughs> and uh, we will, um, you can use that to your heart's content. It's a very, very helpful tool. All right. Thank you, Peter, very much. Listen, guys, one more thing real quick. Uh, go to peterandjoe.com, peterandjoe.com. Dot com if you want to learn how to work with Peter and I, how we can set up your business for you. We can set up your websites. We can set up your systems, your, your CRMs, Podio, set up your voice systems, help you do your marketing for buyers and sellers, and now even negotiate your deals. So once you pre-screen the lead, send it to Peter's office. One of his all-star negotiators will get on the phone and negotiate with your sellers and then get the contracts to you will help you advertise it and sell it. So it's an amazing system. I'm excited about this. And uh, we're starting to do deals all over the country. We're starting to interview a lot of successful clients. One of the things, Peter, we have scheduled this Thursday are about uh, five or six different interviews with clients that are, we've been working with that have done deals, tons of deals. We've never really been big on getting testimonials and interviewing successful clients, but we're starting to try to do that more. Um, it's exciting to see someone just recently, a couple weeks ago, 20 grand on their first deal. Um, so if you want more information on that, just go to peterandjoe.com. It's a simple application that um, we'll get on the phone and talk with you about it. All right. Thanks a lot. Thanks again, Peter. Appreciate it. Thank you. All right. Bye-bye.